Welcome to episode one of uh, Four Nerds Save the Universe. Our extremely recently <laughs> rebranded, <laughs> rebranded, uh, rebranded. Pod. No, no, rebranded. no, 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 sticking with oh. that one. That is the <laughs> best <laughs> sleep you possibly oh, could man. come up with. What a, okay, what a so great I'm, way to kick so this name, one off. So eh? welcome to Rebranded episode one. <laughs> <laughs> where a, ra a random Unless mistake of speaking by bird and just named the entire podcast. <laughs> so that's just the name of the podcast now. There we go. Oh, right. rebranded? Okay. Yeah. You know what? Well, okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> the actual name of the pod. No one the else will have it. It's actually not bad. No one else will have it. So there we go. <laughs> okay. So here's, we'll, we'll <laughs> one, discuss this after. One Everyone will find out what the <laughs> actual name. Everyone will find out what the actual name of the podcast is when the first episode goes up, and whatever that one is called, that's when we know which one this ended up actually being called afterwards. Jesus. <laughs> All right. So uh, well, we just spent the last like twenty minutes arguing about names. Get closer to this. Okay. Uh, no. Uh -huh. I, I've turned shell up a little bit. Hello. Right. So okay. um, hello. Everyone's saying hello. Also, I, I want to introduce my dragon. I made it. It's so cute. Literally, I saw them too bad none of us can see it because Wander isn't nope. streaming this thing. We'll, we'll all see it in the <laughs> future can't. when the video goes up, which neither of you will watch. Pretty much. But I'll see it in editing. <laughs> are, and all, and hundreds of people this? will see it. I can't it. stream the face cam because then I can't record the face cam. Oh. Yeah. No, no. People will see it later. People will see it later. Poor yeah, dragon. honestly, more people will see it by by uh, <laughs> this dumb time delay than the reverse. Mm -hmm. Well, in any case, so, my little blurb about the dragon is over. Sell these at conventions. <laughs> really cute. They but, are you selling those on Etsy uh, or anything yet? Uh, or are you selling them? I, I want to sell them on Etsy. The problem is, if I put that up on Etsy and I actually get orders, I'm going to be like, oh, because uh, yeah. well, I have to prepare me... for the convention and everything. Our podcast right. is well, opening. Let me know as, when uh, you have those up somewhere. Advertisement for yeah. Shell. <laughs> no, no, it's for totally Shell's fine. Plushies. It's totally fine. No, no. Well, I mean, so you, let me. You guys it, are I will so buy close. one. You could. <laughs> I'll buy one. Let me know Use when they're up. Use our promo code one. for ten percent off. <laughs> That's just a thank yeah. you for listening. The secret is uh, just to people... imagine the price was originally ten percent higher, and then you can feel like you got a discount. Right. <laughs> That's what I do to feel good about That's my how, life decisions. That's how jewelry works. That's actually how oh, a lot oh. of Etsy works. That's how all stores work, is they just pretend they actually expend, <laughs> they cost more. That's all of Kohl's. True. These pants well, are marked down from anyway, $90. So, um, actually, I've been to Joanne's in the past. They just always had coupons to mark everything down, like 50%. I like how Bird, right. for once in his weird and relatively long life, is the one trying to keep us on track, track here. Yeah. I know. Sorry. Also two minutes into anyway, a podcast and your microphone's already screwing up. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're getting some crackle. It's oh. fine. <laughs> while you take care of that, while, while, while you take care of that, Wander, I will this just say, uh, people, are asking, people are asking where um, Andrew is, and I feel like it's worth at least like being transparent about that, so Andrew will just not be joining us for uh Yeah, this is our future. new Andrew Free podcast. Yeah. And that's all we really want to go into detail about that. Um, no, it's straight, straightforward. Yeah, well, if Wander's not here, I'll just throw in a topic here. I saw uh, Star Trek Beyond, which no one else yeah, has seen, good. I don't think. Have you, you haven't seen I it, haven't have seen you? It. No, no. Uh, I was misled into thinking it was going to be different. It's not. <laughs> different from what? <laughs> uh, the <laughs> like, previous Star Trek. The, uh, people were acting like it was going to be the one that was actually finding like, actual Star Trek. Like, Why would it be any different? So, like, <laughs> well, there would I, be no expectation I, for that. I always hold out hope that these new ones are gonna like eventually they'll remember what Star Trek is and have like a slow burn storyline with like development and like a mm -hmm. nice some sort of actual conflicted like difficult gray area decision being made by a captain or something. Uh, mm -hmm. No, no, <laughs> it's about a super villain that has a long time grudge that chokes Kirk at some point and has a super ship. It's well, like, that's it's the about same, what we all expected, isn't it's it? It's <laughs> the same movie again for the third time, basically. Yeah, it was and like... And just like the last two, it's I mean, like it's exciting and fast and cool to watch, and you kind of mm -hmm. forget what most Looks of it cool. was afterwards. It's that yeah. thing where it's like, it's two hours long, and it's snappy and well-paced and doesn't feel like it's that long, but also mm -hmm. you kind of dumps out of your head afterwards, just like the last two Star Trek mm -hmm. movies, which, to be fair, are better than almost every Star Trek movie before them, because... Well, being a great show, they kind of made terrible movies for most of the ten that happened before. This is true. 
It's uh, I mean, it's always the rule of every other one, right? Like Star yeah. Trek one, was which isn't bad. even Star true. Star Trek two was good. The, the, which isn't even one. true. That's also yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, the, the people make up their rule, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, but it has like seven exceptions." I'm like, "Well, then why did you say it?" Right. <laughs> it's a ten person. <laughs> it's like thing. I before E, except after C, except after yeah, a, except it is in way or is in neighbor or way. And because like saying every other whatever. Star Trek movie was the good one means that you think Nemesis was good. Oh, no one thinks Nemesis was good. <laughs> but that's the every other number. <laughs> like That's true. That's number four, correct? Yeah. Like, yeah. basically, depending on who you ask, out of the bad. original Star Trek 10 movies, there's, like, maybe mm-hmm. three good ones. Yeah, there's obviously Khan is the first one everyone says. And then there's, like, a 50-50 mm-hmm. split for a lot of people between whether or not the Whales movie was good and whether or not mm-hmm. the Borg movie was good. Because some people are like, yay, Borg movie was like a cool little film. But other people are like, but it's not what Star Trek is. And also they ruined mm. the Borg by giving them a queen. Uh, <laughs> and and Wales was Wales. So yeah. it's very, Wales very controversial weird. topic. The Wales it film was super is weird. the most financially really successful Star Trek movie of the original 10. But uh-huh. that's because it was like a... Like a like it, was a bread, it was like a buddy comedy that's set in San Francisco. <laughs> like, yeah. it was the yeah. weirdest one because it was the least... In in mm-hmm. some ways, it was the most Star Trek and the least Star Trek simultaneously. Yeah. I will say, uh, speaking about the new movies, um, the thing I remember most from the second movie was, uh, God, what's that actor's name? Uh, I can't remember because I can only think of like the stupid names Chris that everyone Pine? keeps giving him. No, no, no. Uh, the British wait, one. Wait, everyone, they were, Benedict Cumberbatch. You... Oh. Yeah, Ben yeah. Cumberbatch. I was just trying to think, like, what's that guy's name? Bumble Civil Crumble Fizzle. And it's like, damn it, that's not what it is. <laughs> Screw you, internet, with your dumbass memes. Anyway. Bumble the uh, Cucumber. <laughs> the thing I remember most from that movie was Benedict Cumberbatch had really great posture. That's a weird thing to remember, right? And that's, like, the only thing I remember from that movie, which is probably not a good thing, you know? <laughs> but, oh, that was the... That he was the low point posture. of the trilogy so far for me was the Benedict Cumberbatch movie, not because he was in it, but because <laughs> it's it a sure movie. It sounds like it was because he was in it. Spoilers for the second new Star Trek movie, but it ends with Spock punching Khan in the face over and over again on a speeding vehicle. And I'm like, hmm. no part of this is Star Trek. <laughs> no, like, it's really like, not. Like, even if you're going to change the tone of the whole thing the way you did with the, this, this, this trilogy, at least don't have Spock punching somebody until they're unconscious. <laughs> Cause that's, no, no, the idea is that Spock he, like, is, like, really young, and he's, like, so emotional and trying to learn how to do but he's things. he's also understand. him and screaming, and, like, I'm like, <laughs> what? What did you do? Mm-hmm. I, was, um, speaking of Star Trek, I went that? to see, I went, I went to the EMP Museum uh, in Seattle, like, a couple of weeks ago. And they have a gigantic exhibition right now on Star Trek. And it was really interesting for me personally because I've always been a big fan of the next generation and pretty much only the next generation. But this uh, museum talked a lot about, like, the original series as well. And I got to I got to learn, like, so much about, like, what that show meant to so many people. And I gained, like, a, actually a lot more respect for it, you know? Because you, like, you start realizing just how old it was and how it was really it was first old time and everything. Exactly. Like to us, it feels like like kind of like campy and dated. But yeah. like from when it came out, it was like uh, so far ahead of like anything that had ever been seen in terms of the content. Because by comparison, of, the like, next the, generation is like 80s and 90s, mm-hmm. which is a huge late a 80s, huge like jump. early 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there's like, there was stuff that like happened in, uh, the original series that was just like outright shocking to like so many people. And like, um, in addition, like it brought the, um, it really brought like a very serious and respected edge to science fiction, uh, in mainstream American culture, right? Like before then science fiction was kind of thought as like this very genre like thing and very like kind of just, um, uh for flash like gordon, men's right? interest to be like yeah and it's just like a little flash gordon was also kind of a precursor to like taking science fiction more seriously but before flash, oh, wait, gordon flash even, gordon's it was way just later like, never mind <laughs> is it well i mean the movie was but like the comics and stuff were older weren't they oh i was only thinking of the show and stuff oh yeah the show was the show was late later but i'm thinking yeah, about star the comics, trek was 66 say that yeah so but before like flash gordon and stuff like uh science fiction was basically thought of as like the Martian men, we have to go fight them and stuff like that. There yeah. was a little bit of more seriousness brought to it also with uh, the War of the Worlds 
But um, Star Trek did a really, really big thing for uh, bringing science fiction more forward and like giving it a very um, politically. So suddenly, suddenly, you're thinking about like a thing that could actually happen. Edge. Mm-hmm. Like it's both commentary on real life and through drawing parallels and stuff like that, but also like creating mm-hmm. a universe in itself that feels like it yeah. can work as opposed to the oversimplified mm. versions of sci-fi that happen most everywhere else, even in Star Wars, yeah. where, like, without... If you don't lose, use any extended fiction of any kind, mm. it's very hard to accept Star Wars movies on their own as being, like, a universe mm-hmm. that functions every day. Right. And, so, like, uh, Star Trek, think, that was the point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, a lot of science fiction had been, like, trying to... Like, the a lot of, like, science fiction's history is grounded in, like, um, doing exactly that, right? Like, uh, making parallels to like the real world and telling it through like this established universe, and uh, um, also telling a cool story about like spaceships and really tapping into like this very imaginative world. But um, Star Trek really uh, took that idea and totally ran with it in a very unprecedented and extremely successful uh, manner. And even like the things that they tackled, especially with concerns about like minority issues, were. Uh, Really, really bold for that show. Oh, yeah. Uh, people still talk about, like, the Uhura and Captain Picard kiss as being, like, this monumental event. And I didn't really appreciate it until I went to a museum where I got, like, a better idea of the context in which all this stuff was going down. It's one of those that, weird things um, where you you have, you have to be taught why it mattered. Because when you see it in, like, precisely. 2010 on Netflix, yeah. you're like... All right, the yeah, kiss, like, and like, it doesn't even register this? as an event that happened. You're like, oh, okay, <laughs> sure, people, people kiss, mm. <laughs> and then you find out, like, oh, so, like, that was like racial barriers, yeah. <laughs> mm. like extremely rigid ones. Whereas I'm used to Next Generation, where there's like five black people in the main cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of them doesn't have eyebrows, yeah. and that's the exotic alien one. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, why doesn't Whoopi Goldberg have eyebrows? It's freaking me out. I don't know, man. I don't know. Too many, too many Entenmans. Too few Entenmans. It's like it's like Matt Smith and Whoopi Goldberg going to get together and just make an entire race of people that don't have eyebrows. Without have eyebrows. <laughs> it's like I've never met an actor who can emote as much as they possibly can without eyebrows. But damn it, Matt Smith does it. <laughs> That's impressive. Oh no, sorry. I just realized that if you type actors with no eyebrows, you get a lot of results of people with their eyebrows photoshopped off. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> I thought I would just get a result of people that fit that description. Yeah. <laughs> but instead, so, I'm getting uh, Justin Timberlake lizard people. <laughs> so, considering uh, Wander's not back yet, do you want to skip ahead in our topic list and go for Pokemon Go? I don't think because, Wander's uh, ever I, coming back. I think he's dead. Well, I think he has technical problems. But anyway. Um, <laughs> I think we just lost like, the premise Wander, of this podcast. <laughs> it's fine. Wander's not going to have anything to contribute to Pokemon Go, so no, if you wanted not. to, uh, he doesn't go outside. If you want to like talk about that right now, that would be, I think, a reasonable thing to do. Oh God! He came back and he's worse. He came back and he's echoing me. Is that what I sound like? I didn't. I've never I been mean, more attracted in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't normally sound like a rock tumbler. <laughs> This is a hell- <laughs> How like, did this man, happen the moment we try to start? <laughs> That's amazing. I, I know. If I wasn't in a relationship and I wasn't myself, I would totally date me in an instant. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Well, I, I kind of wanted right. to start with uh, Pokemon Go anyway, because it's probably the biggest topic that is going around right now. Sure. Uh, let's talk about it. Am I the only person that's played it in our group, I think? You're the only person that's played it, but I've... You've been surrounded heard by heard enough it about it, and my social life has been <laughs> fucking ruined by it enough to where I can easily contribute to this conversation. <laughs> so, go ahead. Let's talk about Pokemon Go. I feel like I should start off by trying to explain like how you play this game and what it actually is yeah, sure. for people that don't go know ahead. it. Go for it. Yeah, I'll go with some kind of vague assumption. You know what Pokemon is, at least. The game where you catch <laughs> fantasy monsters sure. and level them up. And some Fair of them point. evolve into other ones, but some don't because reasons. Uh, that's the one little quirk, by the way. I thought, that, like, I, I almost, like, there's, like, nothing I prefer about Digimon. But the one thing is the fact that at least mo- at least everything evolves. That's a weird lack of of uh, fairness in the Pokemon world. Uh, the uh, But it's a new phone app that just came out. It's on... Uh, I think just iOS and Android right now. And basically you mm-hmm. fire it up and you get like this GPS 
map of your local area. It's always a sort of fixed to you. Like you can't you can't scroll around like you do on a normal GPS. So you have to physically walk mm-hmm. around to try to explore it's stuff. A game. And it's like it's a it's a cartoon version with no street names and stuff. It just shows like paths. And what mm-hmm. happens is you first fire the game up and just throws the starters at you like it does in every game. So you get Squirtle, Bulbasaur, mm-hmm. or uh, Charmander, and you just catch one, and it's yours to start off with. And uh, from then on, you just kind of walk around a map, and as you're walking, your your like phone will vibrate, and you'll look, and you'll see that like on the map, a Pokemon has shown up within your like line of sight radius. So there's like a circle pulsing around you of how far you can detect stuff at. Mm-hmm. And if you click on it, it enters a first person view where you can try to catch the Pokemon. You can do this shitty AR thing where it's like we're gonna broadcast it over your camera's phone. I mean your phone's camera, and it'll like look like it's look, it's on that bench. Go catch that squirtle that's on that bench. That looks like shit, and it runs poorly and it makes the game way harder to play because you have to aim normally. Whereas if but if you just turn it off, uh the Pokemon's just centered on your screen, so it's way easier. So no one actually uses the thing that is like the touted feature of the AR part of the game. Mm-hmm. But basically just throw Pokeballs at it by swiping on the controller. And you try to catch them. And so you try to catch individual Pokemon and you try to collect them, obviously, from like the whole list. And a weird quirk is that if you want to get rid of a Pokemon, you can trade it for candy. Mm-hmm. And that candy is used for either powering up or evolving Pokemon based on like the quantity of it that you get. So mm-hmm. like this is this is more or less the entirety of the basic game's gameplay. You walk around, you catch Pokemon, you can evolve Pokemon, and it, like that's the basic cycle. What's what gets interesting is the uh, the various social interactions and the weird structures and incentive systems that happen there. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the things that happens is that you have limited Pokeballs, and so like for the first day or so of playing the game, you level up fast enough just from pe- catching Pokemon that you just get free rewards and you just get drowned in Pokeballs and it doesn't matter and you don't think about it at first. But after a little while, you that the but level it is ups, free to play, so yeah, the level up gets more spaced out. So then you start have to you either have to pay money, which some people will do, but that's kind of honestly less fun than than the thing that you have to do otherwise. Which is to get Pokeballs normally, you look on your map for these things called Pokestops. They look like this. It looks like a rotating weird circle, like a two dimensional circle that you spin, like those uh, like those desk toys that are a series of concentric circles that are interlocked with each other and the whole thing spins and all the individual circles spin in different directions inside of each other. That kind mm. of thing. It looks like one of those and it, it'll just be physically on your map and you walk to it. It's like a landmark, usually like a park or a memorial or statue or something that's usually mm-hmm. kind of a gathering public location. Public space. Yeah. yeah. And so you walk to these public spaces and you go to your, you go to the little Pokeball, uh, the Pokestop thing, and you just swipe it, and it spins, and items come out. And you can do that every five minutes at every Pokestop period. So like, so you don't ever have to pay money for it, basically, because of that reason. But the side effect of that is that you're suddenly, if you're either at a Pokestop or at the space between Pokestops, you quickly realize there's often like five, ten, thirty. 50, a mm. hundred fucking people there, <laughs> like all for the same reason. Yep. <laughs> and that's what makes you realize yep. like, oh, everyone's playing this game. This is mm. get this is like, it's crazy. And like you get, uh, there's rare items called lures that you can attach to yeah. a Pokestop that make Pokemon more likely to appear. And so people will attach those and that, and that encourages more people to go to that Pokestop and gather around there to all try to catch that stuff. And people are swapping stories and playing the, mm-hmm. the cheesy ass original theme song and, uh, and because the yeah. game, because the developers haven't explained anything about how this game works right now, in many ways, uh, it, we have that same schoolyard talk from when we were eight years old playing Pokemon Blue mm-hmm. and Red and Yellow, where we're like swapping how to capture rumors you and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, we're swapping rumors about how the game works and all these weird quirks of how to level up faster or how to catch certain Pokemon mm-hmm. or what increases your chance of successfully catching something when you throw the ball as opposed to it escaping and running away and stuff like that. And like mm-hmm. that all is happening yeah. organically with people from like four different age groups and every ethnicity and every upbringing all in one group just chatting out with random people in a way that they normally mm-hmm. probably wouldn't and it's it's really fascinating yeah, I to mean, watch beyond anything else that you can say about the game like i think it was extremely successful and how well it recaptured all the things that people loved about pokemon when yeah. they were like eight or nine years old like holy crap it's been it's been quite a flashback to just kind of like over the course of like a week. It's like Pokemon is suddenly super relevant. Absolutely. And it's almost exactly the way you remember it feeling. 
Like, it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. I will definitely give it that. You suddenly get an immediate realization of just how many people were playing this game the first time around. Yeah. Because that exact age it, group is, is with the largest group of people that are out right now playing this game. <laughs> and they're And it never everywhere. really died. It never really went away. It just, like, got but less now they're relevant. Outside. <laughs> and now it's relevant again. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. now they're all outside. It's really interesting. And the, yeah. the other uh, the other geographic thing. <laughs> and they have thing, kids who are playing Pokemon, too. <laughs> with them, yes. There are yeah. people my age with three mm. kids walking around catching Pokemon and, like, shouting out when they find stuff nearby. Because everyone has their own little radius of the detection. Yeah. And they're like, someone will shout out and everyone will run over there. And sometimes it's an asshole that's, like, pretending there's a Charizard. And uh, we uh-huh. get, we'll see how many times he does that before it gets his face kicked in by some by the wrong people. Right. <laughs> uh-huh. The, uh... Anyway, the other, besides the Pokestops themselves, which the point of those is just to try to encourage you to walk from spot to spot, which works sometimes and doesn't work sometimes. In my neighborhood, mm. there's one in a park and then no none nearby, so I can't walk between them in laps or anything like that. I literally have to sit there yeah. and spin it every five minutes or just don't use anything. But when I go to like the local theater area, for example, in the next town over, there's like mm. 20 of them in a big loop around a block that's all these different stores and the local and the theater yeah. and parking lots and the Whole Foods or, and everything. Or it's like... And you, you just, go out in the wilderness and there's nothing. But then you go yeah. to Walmart and there's like 7 billion Pokemon there. Absolutely. Because <laughs> that's where the people are. So it's kind of funny because it it somewhat breaks the spirit of the game in that instance. But it's it's just kind of a funny thing rather than like anything bad. Oh, yeah. It's, it's fascinating just to watch throngs of people all clearly with their phones all doing the same uh-huh. thing. Just brought there independently yeah. of each other. But they're all doing the same thing at the same time and stuff. But like mm-hmm. the uh, the what's what's one of the things that's compelling about this and what what encourages you to swap rumors and to explore and stuff like that is the fact that the uh, Pokemon themselves are not pure RNG. Uh, mm-hmm. Certain Pokemon are more common, certain certain ones are more rare. But the big thing is that certain elements and categories of Pokemon spawn in certain types of regions. So yeah, like if yeah. you so like if you want to catch water type Pokemon, you go to a coastal city like San Francisco or a place that has a big mm-hmm. lake and stuff like that. And like fire Pokemon are more likely to spawn on hot days and weird quirks yeah. like that. And then there's also just really specific pockets to the point where there's people like br- making subreddits for individual regions of the United States so they can discuss rumors mm-hmm. about where certain things are found. And I'm bringing this up because yep. one such subreddit has led to the fact that uh, my neighborhood is swamped with cars driving in circles 24-7 and people walking in circles in the local park wow. all day because that's great. basically my backyard is a spawn point for Dratinis, Dr- Dr- which are not common at all. <laughs> like right now, Dragon that's... Knight's one of the strongest things you can put on a gym. Yeah. And you can basically catch a Dratini and evolve it all the way up to Dragonite just right here, and I have. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a low-level player of the game, and I have one of the most popular Pokemon, I mean, one of the most powerful Pokemon, except for that's not that powerful, because I'm not very powerful, but I already have it, because Mm -hmm. it's just here all the time. (laughs) Like, that, so, like, that, that, that's what led to a specific influx of people surrounding me all the time, where it's like, Mm -hmm. there's just people talk, you just, I walk outside and just will hear the word Dratini every day. (laughs) <laughs> just a normal daily that's life. That's so weird. Right? You didn't even hear that when you were eight years old because no, no one gave a shit about Dratini. Like, how do you contextualize that? That's insane. I know. There's just people I mean, walking Dragonite around saying was Dratini always, all the time. Dragonite's <laughs> always been kind of a badass because they were originally going to be like a legendary or yeah. something. But then they got bumped down to like semi-legendary or whatever. I don't know the category the, super well, but it's, still it's still a really powerful it's like, one. It's still crazy because it's like the only dragon type. Which yeah. is its, its own crazy category, which dragons is are such super a, strong. It's such a weird category because it's like strong against practically everything and weak to only like yeah. two or three elements, and one of those elements is dragon. <laughs> yeah. So its weakness is itself, which is strange <laughs> in its own way. It's very zen. It's very yeah. zen. That's really odd. Uh, but the um, I I know in my where I'm sitting right now, uh, there's a gym located uh, about five minutes from where I am that has a level four thousand Gyarados. <laughs> and apparently this thing is just basically, like, known as, like, this beast yeah. that no one's ever going to fuck with. Like, it is, like, the, like, they have won that gym for, like, the next, like, eight months as a result of that oh, thing yeah. being, like, the level five Pokemon That's a there. really big deal uh, for a lot yeah. of reasons. The 4,000 part isn't as impressive as it sounds, but everything else about mm-hmm. it is actually about as absurd as you think it is. Uh, yeah. The way that leveling works in this game is that... Every time you spin a Pokestop, you get experience. Every time you catch a Pokemon, you get experience. Every time you evolve one, you get mm-hmm. experience. 
er evolving is worth more than catching them uh catching anything that's new is worth a nice big jump of its own of its of its own uh attacking uh -huh. a gym and defending a gym and stuff like that everything's worth, like every action yeah. in the game pretty much that's successful leads to some amount of experience mm. and so that levels up your character uh like your trainer himself every single pokemon you have has a cp which is their combat potential or whatever uh -huh. it stands for combat something uh mm -hmm. that's their score that is basically their level because pokemon just yeah. don't have levels in this game and no, they have so that's that's what the four thousands from, but like, <laughs> yeah, it's not like he's level four thousand as in he leveled up four hundred four thousand individual individual times, but like, what mm -hmm. like his trainer is probably like level thirty, and he and he mm -hmm. ma he maxed out that individual character. The way that works is that you catch yeah. other Pokemon of the same type to get candy. Uh, you get three for catching the Pokemon and one if you send them off to the game's equivalent of Professor Oak. So that's four total for all your mm -hmm. superfluous catches. And so those that you level up that same Pokemon over and over again, and there's like a little radial meter that fills up and when it fills up you're at the maximum cp for what a pokemon can have at your level basically mm -hmm. and so that guy so they're a high his... level player who has focused very hard on leveling up the single gyarados yes. basically which is almost mandatory anyway because the thing about the the Gyar uh, gyarados is almost a joke in its own self because everything has different it's ways to lightning really well, no, well i mean like the way the way you level up is weird because Mm -hmm. Right now, the most popular meta for leveling up your character himself quickly is you catch a massive number of Pidgeys. Squirtles. Because I, oh, I told you about how you get four per uh, yeah. capture, basically. And Pidgeys are dirt, dirt common. Uh, mm -hmm. they're also, they're, yes, they're common, but also of all the common ones, they level the easiest because they only require 12 candy dicks to evolve into a Pidgeot. I mean, a, to a Pidgeotto. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is you capture a ton of Pidgeys, use this thing called a Lucky Egg that's a rare item called that doubles the experience gain for, for 30 minutes. Then you evolve all your Pidgeys at once. And mm -hmm. you get so many levels, you will like skip several consecutive levels. And that's like the number one mm -hmm. way people level up right now. But uh and spoofing. The opposite direction from that is what what I was saying about Magic Card, why it's kind of a joke in its own right, and why you kind of have to emphasize it if you want to have one, is that uh you need five hundred candy. And now Wander's shooting my wanders back and he's shooting my commentary back in my ear and i can't say anything <laughs> oh, now no. oh my god everything oh, i say no. comes back at me <laughs> oh my god oh thank god <laughs> that was great <laughs> oh shit <laughs> oh, did you no. hook it up to phantom power incorrectly or something that didn't last very long did it Uh, that really sucks a lot. Whoops. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> well... Fun. Uh, Fun. No one would blame you. At any rate, uh, yeah. So we're <laughs> just chatting about Pokemon Go right now. So Keith, yeah. yeah. Why don't you just keep going, and then you like, guys can shot can jump in whenever you feel like you've got enough context, or when we get or we get to the next topic. Yeah. You That's not a big deal. You, we, we, didn't, just, we, we didn't talk. We just anyway. draw a picture of you. Oh right, the dragon. <laughs> This first episode is so it fucked already. The first five <laughs> oh. How can we save the universe if we can't save ourselves? Holy shit. Oh, it's wow. fine. It's fine. That's why it's episode one. That or timing was mind-blowing. Yeah. That timing was amazing. Wow, okay. <laughs> anyway, so Pokemon Go but, uh, Gems, yeah. Well, like, the thing about... Uh, we were talking about Gyarados for a second there. The, the weird thing about that is that, like... I told you Pidgeys are super easy to evolve because it requires 12 candy and like other stuff goes yeah. from like 12, 25, 50 and stuff like that. Uh, to get a Gyarados, you need 500 Mar Magikarp candy. So it's it's astronomically higher Shit. than anything else in the entire game, period. Wow. Like it's absurd. So get it, have you, even having a Gyarados so is silly. So that dude was grinding the shit out of Magic yeah. Carps to get a Gyarados that's So your, lo your local gym leader guy is both a high-level player and has one of the hardest-to-get Pokemon in the game and just focused that nonstop. 
So they've been busy. That's pretty badass. No, that's impossible right no, now. No, that that can't be. You done. can get like one because Mew's a pro mode. Yeah, you can't get a Mew, a Mewtwo, a Zapdos, an Articuno, a Moltres, or a Ditto right now. Mm-hmm. So no legendaries a and no Ditto mine, for uh, some reason. <laughs> a friend of mine saw Ho Ho, but wasn't able to even like engage it. He just he's saw it wrong. flying away. He was like, "What the fuck?" He's actually he's just he's just actually wrong. <laughs> no, I'm sure he's uh, lying. But it's a fun story to pass around because oh, we're yeah. all eight year olds again. And it's, we're that's exactly Pokemon what again. that story is. That's somebody spreading uh, Pokemon Blue rumors around in the schoolyard and either lying or being wrong about something. Yeah, he probably mm-hmm. saw a Moltres the or a Firo rumor. Oh, the truck! Yeah, he probably oh, yeah. saw Firo. He probably saw Firo because those didn't look, they say that Firo look a lot like uh, Ho-Ohs. They're similar. Isn't that even in the Pokedex? It says Firos are often confused with Ho-Ohs. Maybe. I just know that uh, mm-hmm. somebody's already gone through all the files of the game, and the next Pokemon literally are not in the files yet. <laughs> so, like, they can't be in the game. Yeah, the, like, they the can't data show doesn't up. exist. Yeah. yeah. Also, nothing flies away in this game. That's not how the game works. <laughs> like, when you're walking around the love... map, GPS style, something, the, the Pokemon will just, your phone will vibrate, and the Pokemon will just show up in a pick, in a fixed spot, kind of doing, like, a passive, like, idle ad- animation. Basically, I know, I know. I'm just saying, like, I'm just, I'm just spreading rumors because oh, we're yeah, eight. oh yeah. <laughs> it's also that's a good yeah. rumor to spread early on because it's it's also a reference to the first episode of Pokemon, <laughs> where exactly. a Ho Ho is on the where horizon Ho-Ho suddenly and no one knew what it was yet because that game it didn't, didn't get exist revealed yet. for like yeah, like another <laughs> two years. Weird tease. <laughs> you know, yeah. it'd actually be really amusing if they actually. Ate- had like they made up a couple, threw them into the source files just to fuck with people, <laughs> just to be revealed in like Mon Silver Black or whatever. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, just, a, like... it's a new drug with love. <laughs> That's probably it's a, real a psychic. Pokemon. Careful, it's a psychic poison Pokemon. <laughs> it sprays psychic poison everywhere, so it's just like <laughs> it's our new Pokemon Rebland. <laughs> yeah, the one la- I think the one last thing to cover, I I, co- I already covered like rarity and the weird like local stuff where like you explore to find individual right. Pokemon because they aren't all in one spot and you can't just wait for them forever. Uh, mm-hmm. thing, the the the, le- the only real thing to cover left is uh, gyms themselves and the way mm-hmm. these yeah work, those are really fascinating to hear about. They work really they well. They're weird. They're bizarre. Yeah. Uh, so what happens is a gym, when somebody has a gym, it's whatever level it's currently is. Like, it could be, like, level, like, anywhere, like, 1 to 10, I think. And what level the mm-hmm. gym is is how many Pokemon can defend it. And yeah. so when you attack a gym, all the Pokemon that are currently in it, you fight them all one after a, each, one after another all in a row, basically. With your existing Pokemon, mm-hmm. you take mm-hmm. six in as a party, and you just go, like... Oh, yeah. It works like those fighting games. Well, I mean, well, never mind. It works exactly like Pokemon, where... <laughs> <laughs> just when one, whenever one goes down, it gets replaced by another Pokemon until you get to the list, basically. Uh, and mm-hmm. you can actively, sw- you can use items and actively switch between your individual Pokemon to change, like the ones you took with you, to try to counter the elements as their Pokemon changes and stuff like that. And all that happens. But uh, combat's really simple. Every Pokemon has two moves. Period. They have one normal move and one super. Uh, mm-hmm. They're all mo- they're all moves from the game. But it'd be like your normal thing would be like Tail Whip, and your super your super would be like Hyper Beam, for example. You uh-huh. tap your Pokemon to do normal attacks, and you hold it down when you have a special meter charged up, like in a fighting game, to use your super. And that's the entirety of combat, besides the fact that you can swipe to try to dodge every now and then. And so it's just a simple, it's a relatively simple combat of just throwing in the right element to try to counter their element and hopefully be powerful enough and just take them on. What happens is that now, when you defeat a bunch of their Pokemon... does the other player actually play along, or is this an they automated do not. thing? That's the thing. It's yeah, asynchronous. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, th- what yeah, so the other player you, levels up, ha- and then you fight the, like an AI that controls their Pokemon. Yeah. Well, what what happens is when you uh, when you take over a Pokemon a uh, Pokemon gym, you just physically take a Pokemon out of your collection and put it in the gym to hold it. Yeah. And it stays there yep. until it gets defeated, basically. And while it's in that gym, it is ha- it has whatever level it has, and they literally have like a it's it's like a reputation or a prestige level or whatever it's called. Mm, it's like their uh-huh. own experience thing for the gym itself. If you defeat uh-huh. the gym a lot, it goes down. 
and if, and if and if you as you lower the level of the gym by constantly grinding away at it, uh, it goes down in level, which means it can hold fewer Pokemon, so the weakest, weakest one gets thrown off the roster and stuff like that. If you de-level a gym all the way down to zero, your faction can then throw a Pokemon into it to claim it for their faction because there's th there's three color oh. factions in the game. Uh, and the factions <laughs> are more or less Mystic, arbitrary. Valor, Valor Instinct, Mystic, and Instinct. Yeah. Uh, and Instinct is colors. way smaller than the other two. Yeah, they're the, <laughs> they're the same colors and icons as the three legendary birds. Yeah, basically. Right. I mean, Instinct is Zapdos. Yeah, which is why my I picked favorite it. was always Articuno. So I don't know. So if, you would be if Mystic, I ever, right? If, if I ever get yes. to that point, though, I I also like Moltres as well. But yeah, I do have to agree that unfortunately Zapdos just never seemed quite as appearing. I think it's. Because people really like the whole like fire and ice. I picked the Zapdos. Like, I think it's because Zapdos kind of looks stupid as hell. <laughs> I think <laughs> it looks like a the porcupine. First, the first uh, booster pack I ever picked up for Pokemon as a kid had a Zapdos in it. Oh, Just nice. as absurd oh, luck. So, so I actually so I'm biased he, in oh, favor. Which, which reminds me of how you're swimming in Dratini right now. I, I personally oh, yeah. my think first Moltres. Card, my first card ever was a Dratini. So. Moltres is, I think, of all the legendary birds, the least. Like the worst designed, it's got this like kind of just weird dumb ball chicken head. It's a rubber chicken, chicken that's on fire. A exactly, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and it's like the thing is, Zapdos looks like a Plutonian from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. So, <laughs> who? To be like, fair, I've never seen it. Ha have not seen uh, enough Aqua Teen Hunger look, Force. And just get look that up one. an image of Plutonians, <laughs> Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and then you can see. I I'll even throw it up on the webcam so everyone can oh, see no. what the hell I'm talking about. Oh no. No, it's fine. It's fine. Like, just as the just just like last after. detail of uh, the gyms itself, the weird quirk about gyms is that if you take a gym to level it up, what you do is you attack your own gym to train, basically. And at the more you do, the more you fight against your own gym, the more you level it up once it's on your team. But the quirk here mm -hmm. is that you can only put one Pokemon personally into each gym. So if you level up a gym to level ten, the other Pokemon like you can't fill the other slots yourself. So the game incentivizes you to actually travel in groups from gym to yeah. gym to grind down enemies' gyms, replace them with your own gyms, and then everyone individually puts a Pokemon in them, which means that in order to be yep. successful at gyms, it actually is like a social so game there, too. It's literally too. like a team, then. That's very yeah. interesting. Like I've already I experienced being in a car driving from gym to gym before with other people, and that's that's part Were of the Pokemon Go experience. People, people drive... No, they're my, they're my housemates. Because everyone's playing it. I, oh, okay. Everyone's playing it. <laughs> well, like, I don't have uh, data outside of Wi-Fi, so yeah. I can't really play. Can't play unfortunately. Yeah. So, so basically, that people sucks. are playing. People are doing imaginary I, warfare for their imaginary gangs, basically, all over the world, <laughs> with their imaginary Pokemon that they're catching in arbitrary, random, arbitrary, uh, imaginary I locations. Heard that <laughs> But there are some people that are actually using, like, lures and stuff as a means to attract like young kids people? into, like, dark alleys. Yeah, and rob them. Um, no. That doesn't I mean, seem I accurate. think it's only happened once. You can't put I lures wherever was, you want. You can only put lures on Guatemala. Pokemon centers. It was in Guatemala. That, that wow. Does Guatemala well, even happened. have Pokemon Go? That's what I'm wondering. It's a worldwide thing, uh, isn't no, it? No, it doesn't. Not really, no. No, it's not. Uh, they just Japan just got Britain it a couple and, days ago. And, and, and Canada then and Japan, like, this week. that must have been like, a bogus week. article. Yeah, like, it probably was a bogus article. <laughs> yeah. Because why... Because they're always talking about, you know, the first casualties. Well, weren't there those guys that went off the side of a cliff because... Oh, yeah, teen shot dead while playing Pokemon Go in Guatemala. I didn't huh. know you could play. Maybe they must have been spoofing their GPS or something. Maybe, yeah. But they wouldn't. They wouldn't have location data for it, like the, that's the why Pokestops. You it. But huh? The no, was pretending no, they, he was somewhere else. Uh, they would have location data for it if would it was they have a country to buy, like, that American the, phones. If the game or, Ingress existed, I don't know. If the game Ingress existed in that country before, then they would already have information for it because this game. Uh, they right. literally took the game it's Ingress and plastered it over it. <laughs> Like, yep. you can open Ingress to find spawn points for Pokemon. <laughs> Which is actually a really, really fascinating topic if we want to talk about how, like, John Hankey basically worked for 20 years to make this game. It's a very fascinating story. In a weird indirect sort of way. Yeah, wow. like, he started making stuff in, like, 1996 or whatever, working with AR. 
Yeah. And then he didn't have his first real breakthrough game with this and with uh, Niantic uh, Incorporated until like Ingress like a couple years ago. And then he puts out like an April Fool's joke with Nintendo to do like AR Pokemon. And then everyone's like, that should be a thing. And he's like, I agree. And then they made Pokemon Go. So he's been he's been building up towards this success for a very long time. And it's really cool to see that that uh, came together for him in such a big way. Oh, yeah. And like Wander and I were going down the street uh, at the library. By the way, if you like log in and log out of uh, Pokemon Go while at a place like a library, uh, a Pokemon will always appear pretty much right when you log back in again. So that's one of the few yeah, ways you've like, been able to your catch data. anything. Yeah. Right, right. Because it was on Wi-Fi there. So, uh, yeah, I was able to catch mm-hmm. Drowsies? I think it was like Drowsy, know. Nidoran, whatever. Interesting but things. There, but... there are lots of uh, stories of people getting injured and stuff like that while playing it. So um, make sure to look up your from your phone every once in a while so you don't walk out <laughs> in the road. Literally you know, the first thing that happens cool stuff like that. The- the first thing that happens when you launch this app, and it's been this, I believe this has been true since launch, is it has it a loading says, screen be where it has a guy this walking along a dock, app. and it says, be aware of your surroundings, and right in front of the guy on the dock looking Gyarados. at his phone, it's a giant Gyarados ready to eat him. That takes up most mm-hmm. of the That's screen. That's pretty funny. <laughs> so, like, That's the game warns you actually, constantly. I've Just actually a, seen a, some people post, like, their own versions of that, and I, I always think oh, yeah. that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Just a quick update yeah, on the Guatemala story. Yeah, I saw some parody ones that were great. Uh, yeah. The Guatemala story just says that somebody was playing Pokemon Go and then and someone happened to attack them and the police say that they can't in any way connect uh, it to the game. It wasn't an intentional lure. No, okay. you can't. Oh, okay. You can't lure people well, anyway. That doesn't. Work. It doesn't work that yeah. way because lures well, can only think... be atta- attached attached to Pokestops and you can't create Pokestops. They're all public like gathering locations, so you can't like right, dark alley so... lure. There's there's incense mm-hmm. which attracts Pokemon to you, but they only have it only affects you and no one. It only you can't, you can't you. see other players yeah. in the game ever. Well, I think that they probably tried to design it in such a way that people would be safe while playing it. Yeah. Because they, I imagine they're not. Yeah, all so the gathering points are at the most dumb. public possible locations, probably on purpose. Yeah, that is a very responsible decision on the game developers' part yeah. there. So, uh, I think that, um, in the interest of time, I know there's probably plenty of stuff to keep talking about on Pokemon Go, but I want to definitely make sure that we get through a couple more topics tonight. I think, I think the most interesting guys... thing about Pokemon Go, Go is going to be how the conversation develops over the coming months. Uh, yeah, we should definitely revisit this topic in like the, two or three weeks and see how, what new stuff's happened. How persistent this is going to be, or if it's going to be a weird flash in the pan, or if this is going to be like a well, game changer. The other, thing t- the other thing too is I'm a, a little disconcerted by the fact that it seems to only be about... Uh, like leveling up and battling. I'm wondering if there's going to be anything else you can do with your Pokemon in like downtime when you're sitting at home and can't It'd be, be out likely, and about. Very, very great if they had something like that. Yeah, I, I mean, hope that they do incorporate well, something like that. I know that they had the Ami a whatever system in the other Pokemon uh-huh. games where you do mini games with your Pokemon. Those and were boring. They need a Chow Garden. Uh, <laughs> they need a Chow yeah. Garden. I will say, <laughs> I literally <laughs> never had fun doing a thing in a Pokemon game that wasn't battling and collecting Pokemon. Except maybe mm. Snap. Well, well Snap Pokemon was Snap awesome. Is like a separate. But like, that's the only entirely. time I've had fun with a Pokemon title that wasn't just the mm. part where you catch and train yeah. the Pokemon. The thing is, in X and Y, by doing those games with your Pokemon, you actually gain favor with them. So in cases like mm-hmm. be- Espeon uh. and Umbreon, if you wanted to get them, it'd be much easier to do so with one that actually cares for you. And then they, you know, they evolve at day, they evolve at night. But they also acquired mm-hmm. new abilities, or they could withstand fatal blows. It was, it was weird. Yeah. They would, like, withstand fatal blows because they loved you so much, but there was something just weird about my, like, big, angry Pokemon <laughs> talking about just how much it loved me. And I, I love like, you! It was, <laughs> wow. it, was, it, was, it was just a I love little, you so like, much that I'll bite through the pain. <laughs> oh. like, I had a, Pretty much. I had a Pretty giant, much. like... It's the heart of the cards, uh, dude. At some point, I, at what point are you the bad guy for making them do this? I, had I think like a at gar- the very beginning, you're making your I had a Garchomp, love. which do you guys? You guys probably don't know what a Garchomp is. No, uh, it's, it sounds it's, like a Growlithe it, puppy or something. It's a giant shark dragon. I was never, I never made it totally Kyoto. wrong. <laughs> I thought it was going to be the garbage Pokemon, but so um, um so I I I the had doof. him and he was he was just like totally like I love you and would like just totally resist, like, death. 
constantly, which was like really cool. And he was like an utter it was badass. This anime, dude. It's just anime. But like, it would just it would just pop up with a little message every once in a while saying. You know, he loves you so much, and I'm just like, this is wrong, this is my murder monster. The, the interesting thing is, I think they could actually get bonuses to their attacks, too. Oh, yeah, it like, was... Like, my Xerneas mm. was just like, it critted the other Pokemon because it's so in tune with you. Oh, geez, this, yeah, po- this like, Pokemon oh. is number 445 for context. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's way outside and the realm of which, Pokemon which, that I know a which damn reminds thing me, about. What- what do you guys think of all of the like luau related islands? They haven't even looked into it. Themed Pokemon that they have for the next game. I'm not sure if they know. There's no one idea. that's literally I've never made it past silver. I what, don't. What do I they don't know. gold. Like flower necklaces. I know there's a specific name for them, but one of them was literally a Lays. flower necklace. A Lays. Yes, there was mm. a Lays Pokemon. Were they a ah. potato chip? Sounds delicious. It, <laughs> <laughs> all right any any final thoughts though like i'll, I'll, nope. I'll i you sound it sounds oh, interesting to read about this I just but i want to see where this goes before. basically yeah my my last final thought is i actually hope they add it to the main game because i think that's more interesting than the actual execution of like pokemon go like i'd love to be wandering around in my 3ds is yeah. like by the way you got it uh you've been attacked by a random pokemon and you can, like, encounter random trainers that way. Like, kind of throw the AR into the game itself. Because they did that a couple of times, and it was really cool. Uh, like, in the past with other mm-hmm. games. Not so much in this one. Yeah. So or if they actually had multiplayer in the DS games using, like, Pokemon Go? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that would Anyway, uh, do we want to do one Let's transition to Setsuna. Um, while you guys set that up, I will be right back. I need to get well, drink. Well, first off, how far have each of us actually gotten? We don't want to spoil it for Keith, one do you have the airship yet? Um, or have you been I, on the airship? I failed to get the airship. <laughs> okay, so you're a little bit ahead of us. Wait, Probably. What? If, Prob- if maybe? you failed to get... I mean... No, 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 okay, so... I'm probably past you guys. Uh, the uh, Yeah. So th- this game's been interesting because it's... Uh, I've been told that it's supposed to be a... Almost practically a remake, and some to some extent, mechanically of Chrono Trigger, which is actually a game I've never yeah. played. <laughs> yes, so I don't, I don't Same know. Here. So I have zero concept of what mechanics are being recycled or reused or whatever, or anything like that. And all I know is Chrono that Trigger it's... have the artwork from like Dragon Ball Z or something. Yes. Yeah, I oh, remember yeah. that. But the, the, main, the main thing the I know is it's just it. a it's just a kind of satisfying turn based RPG with uh nice it it's it, it's it's slightly weird that the game has area based attacks and like field control kind of moves but like you don't ever seem to contr- directly control where your character is that, yeah that part's slightly that's, weird that but, bit uh, gets annoying but the rest of it's like actually really yeah, fun largely, and satisfying I'm, largely I'm having fun with it and. Uh, it, it does a lot of I things think... right that the genre hasn't been doing for me in a long time, which is that uh, there's two big problems for me in a lot of Japanese RPGs I've touched for the last few years, especially while I've been like doing less plays and stuff like that, which is that, uh, one, the pacings are usually garbage, where you spend yes. years and you spend hours literally going through, like, like uh, we're both playing Tokyo Mirage Sessions, this game has... Yes, the game has carbon mm-hmm. copy hallways you run down for like a couple hours straight in between story bits where you just fight random spawning monsters. But Setsuna hey. has like a forest where it's like this forest yeah, it's has actually like well five monster it's... rooms that are in fixed locations, and you fight through them and get to the next story. And it's like, oh, cool, more story already. And we and it's like back and I, forth I've in liked a nice how pace. I will admit, the pacing of the story. My is. one complaint, though, with, with it is. Uh, the like monster variety. I'm sick of fighting those penguins. Oh yeah. No, no, the seals. I I assume the penguins are like an emblematic thing of the series. No, it's just like kind of their their generic like. Is it? Yeah. They have some. It's just a new game. Their head too. I thought it was a spiritual successor to. Well, yeah, mechanically they weren't really. Like they're really far removed from it all. There's absolutely a thing in Setsuna where as you're playing through it, for I I'm. Three or four hours in now, maybe even five hours in, and yeah, every almost every encounter has penguins in it. Like there's a really oh, there's, a bad, there's, a, there's a lack of monster variety besides boss fights. 
The part that annoys me the most is like you keep running into the, we keep running into these like new important characters that are surrounded by penguins, which I proceed to one shot Attacked almost immediately. <laughs> and it's just like what one of the guys specifically is like this absolute badass, way more powerful than my main character, and he's like on the ground, just like too well, tired to go on been fighting surrounded so by penguins. And it's just like <laughs> It's really hard to take seriously, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Like the kid, at least, kind of makes se- makes some sense. But what's slightly weird about the game is that it's trying to tell this dark, depressing story about the world coming to an end because uh, this this girl needs to go sacrifice her life in order to repel the monster invasions. How many years in between sacrifices there are? Uh, it's been less than ten in this case. Mm-hmm. This, that's the like specific it's thing. To appease them. This, this is a thing that they like to do in a uh, in a lot of Japanese RPGs. There's this, there's this concept of cycles and something that repeats over and over again, like your Dark Souls and stuff like that. Like there's some great evil that comes back over and over again and has to be repelled over and over again, Castlevania and so on. Uh, mm-hmm. In this case, th- th- usually what happens in these games too is also there's a special condition in that this time it's worse than ever before. Is always the car- the little caveat, right. and this time. <laughs> This, well, t- this time the idea I, is the monster coming back faster the than ever sacrifice, Yeah, this, like time, this time if the, you don't sacrifice it, the thing will destroy everything, as opposed well, to most I think, things. I think usually when that occurs, though, the object of the game is to actually it's, end the cycle. Yeah, exactly. but like it's very classic. Uh, it Tales of Symphonia line. had it. Uh, uh-huh. Final Fantasy X had it. I'm trying to think of what other games specifically had that like plot style. And I've actually I've it's been kind so of blown common. away by how often playing this game I ke- I keep having moments of Final Fantasy X is that you? Because <laughs> they ke- it keeps coming back throughout the game. <laughs> the I premise mean, is Final Fantasy even... X. I'm looking at screenshots right now, and it looks very much like they I made mean, X and even... never really moved past it for art style. <laughs> <laughs> you can even say that with Legend of Zelda, it's similar. Like Link, Zelda, and Ganondorf are always reincarnated as they're part of the Triforce, and yeah. Ganondorf always yeah. returns. But like the I just like, choose not to pay attention to all that stuff, though. <laughs> it's just like the thing where there's like there's a group of people that are coming together to escort a girl uh-huh. to sacrifice herself so that she can take on the great evil. Like that's Final Fantasy X's entire story. The, the protagonist mm-hmm. being the one person that's an outsider to this entire scenario from some other land is also in both stories. Uh, the, one of the first mm-hmm. people, one of the people you will uh, unlock really quickly yeah, is a so guy you can with, with them and learn. he's got a face scar and he's stoic and he's got a super sized blade and he's from the previous attempt at, uh, at uh, uh, sacrificing. Yeah, yeah. Like that's we, Orin we from just... Final Fantasy X. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you Orin almost was in- awesome. At some point <laughs> in the game, you encounter an animal person who's going to take you to their their snowy mountain village hidden away that's full of all the other animal oh people, God. which is the Ronso from Final Fantasy which X. Which is Kamari. Somebody tries yeah. to kidnap the summoner, which is Seymour from Final Fantasy X. I'm like, okay, we could just, yeah, sure, we could just make the same <laughs> game again. It's okay. It's Final So okay. at, To be fair, Final Fantasy so far, X is a really it's great. damn It's good fine, game. yeah. It's great. <laughs> but as far as I can tell so far, this game is... And I'm this first statement is trusting other people. Uh, suppose it seems to be Chrono Trigger's gameplay with Final Fantasy X's story. Based on more, it seems to be a safe thing to say at this point. Yeah, the but extent to be fair, that sounds like weird. a really that sounds like a winning ass combo if you ask me. Yeah. It is actually pretty solid. Oh yeah, like I'm not uh, even complaining. Will, I'm just pointing it out because <laughs> I, I will I also my say face all the time. <laughs> It, it improves on both in very good ways. Like, yeah. there's no extremely long early section with a generally unlikable character with not enough development to kind of make him worth caring about. And the starting like, uh-huh. party doesn't feature seven, like, like several completely pointless characters ad- added in. Yeah, there's no Waka. Yeah, it's weird that yeah. she only has, like, one guard like to start Waka. off in her initial okay. plan, but at least there's not four completely extraneous characters added in. I, I'm going to be uh-huh. totally honest here, though. Waka, had, Waka, neat guy, kind of racist, no business being anywhere <laughs> close to any of that. Ooh, wait, which it's like if we was had, a like, uh, <laughs> it's like if we had Pele saving the world. <laughs> like, it'd be funny. <laughs> oh. I know, it yeah. would be really funny. It'd be like if I'm Tim Tebow to- joined up with an epic team to save the universe or something. Yeah. It, exactly. Final Fantasy <laughs> like, X definitely had a thing it. where, like, when the party's formed and I look back at it, like, Kamari makes perfect sense. It's Yuna's guardian animal man person, but the other ones, 
Lulu and Waka, like, I, Waka, I literally forget exist over the course of the game sometimes. Lulu, yeah, well, Lulu was Lulu's hot. kind of. <laughs> she was. Uh, she had she, seventy belts. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> she had yeah. a belt dress. You couldn't quite tell because it was low resolution, but when you saw the art, you're like, uh, her whole dress is belts. That's yes. just belts. Uh, no, her her art design was fucking atrocious. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was really I bad. I think it's funny that Omni was doing the whole. I'm the very model of a doo general. You know that kind of thing. What is that? Was like, what is, what is what that? What is that? About? She Shell has a habit of reading things out of chat. Oh, she's bringing then, up sorry. something from chat with no context. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, sorry. I was like, I who? I'm like, I don't know an Omni I am character. I'm the very model of a major general. I've I've knowledge about lots of things and vegetables and minerals. <laughs> That's all I know. Matters, I don't even know that part, honestly. Mineral. Uh, vegetables see, and minerals. The first time I ever heard that song was like a guy dressed up as General Grievous from Star Wars singing a song that was slightly modified so that it fit the Star Wars uh, universe. And I'm just like, wow, that's pretty cool. In, in a General Grievous voice. But in any case, <laughs> yeah, Setsuna. Anyway... Back to Setsuna. <laughs> so what uh, What did they borrow from the gameplay of Chrono Trigger? Did they borrow, like, going back and forth in time, uh, or what? Well, they've got the old, like, the, the classic Final game. Fantasy ATB oh, no, meter that fills no up. Oh, there's no time travel? What the fuck? That's not Chrono Trigger. No, we said yeah. mechanically as in, like, the gameplay. Like, yeah. Like, uh, all the, the way time travel is like, definitely part of the gameplay of Chrono like Trigger. Like, the main character... Well, there, you're... There is a weird quirk where, uh... Like, your main character immediately has uh, Cyclone, which I've been told is the starting skill of Chrono from Chrono Trigger, but the second character in your party that's not Setsuna, all of her powers are time powers. <laughs> her name's, like, a Eterna or something, which just sounds like... Eterna? It, might, it sounds like a, mm -hmm. a, like a, a, a mutation of the word uh, Eternity, basically. Eternity, And all of her yeah. powers are, like... It's supposed to be like, Latin. Yeah, she has slow powers and time powers. Mm -hmm. She literally applies time power to your weapons and stuff like that. And creates time the vortexes sword is powered by together. time. <laughs> <laughs> my, my new TARDIS blade. <laughs> the game has some weird, oh, a few weird quirks. Like, from a narrative perspective, it they make cut it, you faster. The narrative's a little weird. Like, your protagonist was sent on a mission to kill this girl, but you immediately get elected. But then he fell in love. Yeah, you. Please well, tell like, me he didn't fall in love. You kind of just get. Oh, you get like sucked it's, into her charisma, basically, because you can't uh, not join her. You have to just join her on her, on her pilgrimage. Yeah, she always speaks to him so. She speaks to Endear so endearingly. She she is she is endearing. super infatuated with hand face ma uh, man, and hand face. He doesn't man. say. Want to contextualize like, so that for me? <laughs> Look up oh, his yeah, character his mask design. Has hands on it. <laughs> his mask is made out of two freaky ass hands. And they're cat ears. Is he yeah, hot? Type and type Ender into your search. It's like Ender from Ender's Game, but with an I instead of at the like an I as the last vowel. Uh, -E well, here's the thing. I typed in E, and because <laughs> I've been looking up I am sets into this whole time, Google was like, I got this. <laughs> Alright, so I'm looking up Ender and it's giving me Setsuna instead. <laughs> right there. Well, he's got he's uh, got a red face mask that covers the top half of his his head he and his blue. eyes, and he's got two black masks over. He's got two black hands over got it. his okay. His got head. it. I don't it's see just... face. I don't see hands. Oh, I see hands. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they don't, you don't see them at first, but they're weird. <laughs> Why is this sword made out of like a sapphire? I don't know. You replaced the sword. In I was about to bring that up. Actually, you replaced the sword like twenty minutes into the game. Yeah. It's weird. Uh, that okay. sword is on all of his character sketches, and when you get into the game, it makes a point to explain via text, when you look at that sword, how every mercenary is part of their ritual of becoming whatever in their clan. They but make isn't their that own so sword. so fucking, like, like JRPG, like, like, though? Yeah, like, he has And then play, he immediately just throws he, it away. His like, sword this is actually, the sword of, that's yeah. been lost in the cave of legends, and then you get it, and then it's like, and then at the next town over, we have a better sword but made in this by case it's, In this Doyle. case, it's weirder because it's personally attached to him. Like, it's like the, yeah. Jedi, <laughs> it's like the Jedi lightsaber origin story, but he throws it away immediately. Well, yeah, yeah so they the should. The thing is, the game has an upgrade system. And I, personally, I think it would have been cooler if they just had, like, a branching upgrade system, and you can't buy weapons, uh, like, 90% of the time, yeah. like, you're just stuck with what you have, and you just are on a mission to find mm. upgrade materials. Because that would make more sense, because now he's got this personalized sword that he's, like, upgrading, and he's like, do you want damage, do you want, like, 
you know, a little bit faster or something like that. I think that would be more interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because currently it is such a classic just new town, new gear. It's Um, actually actually weirdly rote and mechanical. And that's that's the thing about the game in general is that while... While it's good in general, I find that everything about it is so calculated to not take risks. And that's why it has an existing Mm. story from another game and the gameplay from another game. And has these kinds of steps of, like, literally go to each town and get your new weapons in each town. Like, every weapon has an upgrade of, like, every... All your weapons are... They have a weapon that's that's 10 power stronger than all the weapons all your other characters have. Go replace them every town over and over again. Like, that kind of cycle absolutely happens. Mm Mm-hmm. And, uh, that's, all the way down uh, to, that's kind of a damn shame, isn't it? Every, you can even get down to every location and every plot point having the included boss fight. And the boss fights could be rearranged at random in any order because it's just some monster at a place you'll see that one time and nowhere again. Like, yep. one place Perhaps had a some... werewolf monster. Sure. It, it was just there. Yeah. <laughs> I... So I legitimately thought it the werewolf like the monster for the guy. Yeah, I thought it. I thought it was no, like just, the the Baron random. guy. I that <laughs> bothers me wearing, so much. He was wearing the same cape, and I, I had the same ponytail. I I, I thought swear. he had like borrowed the powers and like you they, know they probably <laughs> had an alternate like storyline where he at, actually did become that. But then they're like, nah, let's scrap it, but let's keep the wolf because <laughs> we already spent so much time modeling it. If the, if the, if this uh, game secretly had a wolf Seymour, that'd be insane. <laughs> but yeah, I, I Seymour think the problem wolf. is growing <laughs> up. Aside from Knights of the Old Republic, I think most of the games that I played were like the collectathon games, in which you had consistent weapons and abilities that never became redundant. You would always acquire new abilities and new weapons, but they would be different from your base set ones that you would still need for most scenarios. So it, I never It is often understood... more satisfying when they all go in parallel and it's like side grades instead of upgrades. So you, instead of mm-hmm. instead of becoming flat, more powerful, and get better things that replace your old things, it's it's nice to just get better options and more variety so you can adapt I to mean, things. For me, I like it when even your like basic ones kind of upgrade themselves so that it's like slightly better or slightly more interesting. Right, but I... I... For instance, when we were playing Skyrim, I just get so discombobulated by, and like World of Warcraft and MMOs and stuff, you just get, get so much gear thrown at you and you have to constantly mm-hmm. empty out your inventory and stuff. It's just like, why? At the original Mass Effect. I think that that game was the worst offender I've ever seen of that. <laughs> oh, the inventory? Man, the original Mass Effect sucked. Oh, man. If That's, you're, uh, I don't the, know if you ever the, played it, but like the original Mass Effect, you got to look at three items in your inventory at a time. Yeah, they barely fit on the screen for have, no like, reason. Of them. Absolutely. Yeah. What? Yeah, Ooh. Mass Effect One is one of my yeah. favorite games of all time. Everything about opening your inventory was a chore. <laughs> yeah, it was really like, bad. Yeah, it was a vertical list of items where like the three of them would it would just be three on three it, it giant was... tiles for some reason, and you'd slowly scroll them, <laughs> and everything had the same names over and over again of being like. Like the oh yeah the Alzheimer like the, the, seven and stuff like that the Alzheimer <laughs> six and it's like oh wow the different marks of the same name and it's it's like it was not satisfying loot because uh-huh. it was they were literally wonder, carbon copy versions I wonder if that's been modded it had to have been <laughs> uh, modded at this point right like there has to be a better in, inner in, inventory the mod they might have even changed it on PC before it came out <laughs> no I played it on PC oh, oh it never was mind. Yeah, it, fucking it, awful it was awful yeah it was bad <laughs> it's it's been a while, and also Bethesda is not very... Bioware. Not Bethesda, Bioware. Bioware. Bioware, Bioware doesn't really do the... ports. They just they kind of do... like... <laughs> they don't like, do they ports, just copy and they and don't... paste it over. Yeah. <laughs> they don't do ports, and they don't do mods. Pretty much no. ever. Yeah, my whole thing with Mass yeah. Effect is I would just do an entire planet, and if I... If, uh, if my inventory ever got full, I would just dump a few random objects and not care about too much. And then I'd, when I was done with the entire mm-hmm. planet, I would dedicate like five minutes to finally being like, all right, where, which which weapons give me the biggest numbers? Those ones. Sell everything else. Moving on. Avoid this inventory were... screen like a yep, plague. Pretty much. That's there all you can do. There were mods for Knights of the Old Republic, though. I mean, I yeah. I remember, I remember applying several of them, but they tended to be uh, character skins. That's the first yeah. thing that gets modded because it's the easiest. You just find the file for the skin and you just color over it, it's basically. Also, it's also yeah. one of those where, like, like that's not to the extent that some games are moddable. Like, what's a good example of, like, a heavily moddable game? Well, like, Minecraft, I mean, they might example. want to check that's... some against the uh, textures, though, to see if they're corrupted. 
So you have to make sure that you modify the texture. I mean, some games might do this, not all of them. But some games, it might be that you have to like disable like checksums, and that becomes really hard to mod even textures, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's definitely... They might... It's much easier when you're using already existing in-game assets. I mean, if we're mm. going to talk about inventories, pretty much my favorite thing is, like, the, the Dark Souls-style thing. Which is the idea of, like, everything's oh, a unique yeah. item, everything's so you don't pick perfect. Up, you're not picking up 17 <laughs> dupes of the same item. And, uh -huh. uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So and everything's no unique, inventory and just carry or weight it all. Limit. Yeah. 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 I so People I'm got gonna really annoyed comment. at me. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Oh, I was going to change the topic, but you can, you can oh, say okay. what you're oh. going to say. I was just going to yeah. say, people always get really annoyed at me for just infinitely hacking up my inventory space to maximum, or, like, well beyond mm. maximum. But the no least deals. fun it's thing ever in RPG is when you have to stop <laughs> to clear out your inventory mm -hmm. in the middle of a thing to do a thing, because you can't move on with your life. Mm -hmm. uh, and they made that mistake, by the way, because uh, none of the new games have it, but Demon Souls had an inventory limit. I your remember. Step, your it sucks. Determined your equip load also determined how much you could carry overall. Oh period. God, no! Yeah, that's terrible. Well, so it was one it number was for your, how much you could carry, and one number, a number that was much lower for how much you could like wear. But uh, that's bad. You when Why? you get to the, when you get to those things like all those strength weapons and tower shields that are horrifyingly expensive. Yeah, suddenly, we would just leave them behind. You're suddenly <laughs> midway through a dungeon with an overly heavy thing and. You have to drop something basically because the game basically, from in most environments in the game, didn't even have selling. And if you left the zone, everything would disappear. Oh, which also reminds so me screwed. of uh, Path of Exile, was it? Yeah. Their inventory system was, you know, everything oh, the, has a footprint. And yeah, the Diablo, oh, yeah. the Diablo style inventory system. I was going to bring up something. I actually. Garbage. I actually like the Diablo inventory system. So I I like it because like it, it makes me feel <laughs> it makes me feel good about um about managing cheesing. It. Well, oh, yeah, like managing it, yeah. it. Like it it's got like it's got that Tetris appeal. However, I don't yep. think that's actually good design. I think I would like it more if it didn't have so many garbage items. Like, yeah, I guess so. It, it's like white and gray items in World of Warcraft. Nobody's ever going to use them. Why even them, why even have them there apart from annoying people that have to have everything? It's like in um Well now people get skins. Alright. All right. Yeah. Let me make a do case. You, Let me make a you, case for the Diablo inventory system. Close your eyes. I'm gonna I'm gonna paint a picture with my words here. I don't trust I mean, you. Imagine I'm gonna find out you're in <laughs> you're there. I'm gonna find out you're behind me. <laughs> you're gonna fill out my inventory with all sorts of shit and I don't wanna Not deal with that. Closing my eyes. <laughs> no, no, no. Cl close your eyes. Picture yourself. No. You're 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 in the Renaissance. It's the 1500s, and you're on an epic quest to save the universe. And um, okay, and you're like, uh, and you just picked up a sword off the ground, and you have like your sack full of full of like magical wares and such. And you're like, how do I fit this sword in? Uh, if so I you just turn it this direction this and then like pack it in next to the boots, like there it is. Like, and then weren't then you, you just end up there? With, like, weren't you just there with boots? Me? Bird because just wants no, no, no. Simulator Your game. Your boots are fucking fine. No. Bird wants, oh, bird wants no. a hacking simulator. Clearly, you have to slide it between your belt and your tunic. Oh, no, no, you can't do that. I mean, no, no, no. So the belt takes up four squares, and it's just in a little circle by itself. You can't, you can't mess with that but one. But you're wearing the belt, so... Oh, oh no, we're, arg belt. we're arguing about fictional spaces. Oh, no. <laughs> what are we going to do? No, nah, I, I I could see people not liking it, but I always felt like it was a very immersive inventory system. You know what? You know what? You know what games. killed the Diablo inventory system? Controllers. Diablo having too many fucking items. <laughs> it's no, just controllers. Just controllers. Agree. Oh, yeah. the worst yeah. thing that can happen to I that system that. is is encountering a controller, and I can say that as oh, someone yeah. who's currently playing Deus Ex: Human Revolution on PC with a controller. <laughs> Because I just oh, it yeah. just comes naturally to figure out like because there's always like hotkeys for skills and I'm not gonna remember what fucking part of the keyboard like my invisibility got mapped to when it, instead of as opposed to like say up on the D-pad which is natural I'm like oh yeah yeah it's a little because the game even gives <laughs> so, you like a D-pad notifier like hmm. uh like Zelda for where your skills are yeah. I'm like oh cool uh, somebody in my chat says they want to have a game where you can put small items inside your boots or something and I'm just picturing <laughs> like taking that a step further and being like. You put like a potion in your boot, and then you forget to take it out when you equip the boot, and you just like <laughs> stick your foot and like break a potion in your boot, and you're just like, oh, oh, oh wait, damn oh, it!" No. Okay. <laughs> so this is this is kind of 
off, but that reminds me. Uh, did you guys ever hear of um, what was? Uh, it was it was one of the earliest uh, Telltale games. It was Puzzle Agent. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I remember playing that with you. Okay, so apparently the guy that made Puzzle Agent is like a separate person. Like, from who? All of that art was done by one guy, and not by, like, Telltale. Like, that was either mm -hmm. one guy that worked for Telltale at the time or something. But he has a, um, he has a YouTube channel I found recently, as well as, uh, a Vine channel. And his Vine channel is hilarious, because it will do just, like, the weirdest dumb shit that he can think of. Mm -hmm. So one was specifically, like, it showed an elf, like a tiny little elf, snoozing quite placidly in somebody's boot. Oh. And then oh. it panned out to somebody putting on said boot. And then there was a screaming and a crunching noise, and that was it. And I was just like, man, this guy's fucked up, and that's why I loved his game. That was my nightmare uh, for several years of living in a house with a uh, chihuahua. <laughs> Oh, oh, that you would step yeah, on really. a chihuahua. Like, just walking around to... at night or, like, closing a door behind me. I always thought I would just randomly kill a chihuahua. <laughs> I remember reading that in in a Reddit story. Some guy was just like, yeah, our dog had a lot of puppies and they were running around the house, wonton, whatever. And he bout was bounding down the stairs and actually crushed one to oh, death. Oh, no. And it's just like... Wow. Uh, also, that was a red zone. That yeah, was bad. Into. I what? thought it was safe. Oh, we're talking I'm about Wonders Star video games now. I'm playing Starbound. <laughs> Gravity got me. All right. Shall we, uh, we, should, shall we, we discuss No Man's Sky or Necropolis? Should, yes. Are you sure you don't want, want to just start about? ranting about Necropolis right now? <laughs> I mean, my feelings on Necropolis, since we're... Okay, so we decided Necropolis. My feelings yeah. about okay. Necropolis I don't have, think we have waned a both. lot. They're not... Yeah, I know. They're not nearly as strong as they were when we were playing it, but, like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. You had the same reaction holy I shit. did. Because while it you're playing it, you finished. just... It doesn't feel finished. Yeah, while you're playing it, it's it just happening. It doesn't. It doesn't feel remotely finished. You had the exact same thing happen to me, and I told you this was going to happen at the time, where I'm like, while you're playing it, it's just going to be happening, and sure. But when you, when you finish playing it, you're going to think back about it happening, and you're like, what the yeah. fuck is this product? <laughs> <laughs> like that that's that's like, why I wrote that review that I did, which mm -hmm. I think still is the top negative review. I could mm -hmm. be wrong. I'd have to look it up again. I can't imagine other people are writing as detailed re reviews as me, but I don't know. <laughs> you probably uh, play the game more than most of the people. <laughs> I mean, mo most people I don't know. Some people do, some people don't. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, but like I I wrote that really scathing review after the fact, because it was just, like, I kind of needed to from a, like, yeah, um... Right. To if, process. I, if I didn't... Yeah. If, if I didn't, I felt like my, my negative feelings would be... They really need gone. a weapon upgrade system. They almost, they almost need to be ex 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 uh, sort of expressed, because even when we were playing the game, you didn't... You, did, you, oh, yeah. you were still not willing to go negative yet about it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Shell was after the fact mm -hmm. uh, when she was talking to me about the game, like after we did our four person session. She's like, "You know, you guys actually made it look fun," and I'm like, "Yeah." Well, uh, when it was when it was you and Keith <laughs> playing, yeah. It's a it's a surprise. It's right up there with Sim I mean, City, the new one where they just called it Sim City again. Where mm -hmm. when you start it off, you're like, "All right, cool. This seems nice. Everything's working. It looks nice. It seems functional." It kind of has like an arc to it. We're going, all right, we're just going along. And then a few hours and then in, well, you're like, five minutes you're in, you're like, why didn't I have any fun? Some amount of Where time passes and you realize it, something was wrong. I think part of it was it really hyped itself up as, you know, just as difficult as Dark Souls. And yeah. then, yeah. like, you guys were playing it and you guys were excited because we're surviving this. That's cool. Uh -huh. like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you I realize it's actually, not. Yeah. Actually, according to a number of comments, like, uh, either Keith, Keith and I got really, really lucky at the time. Mm -hmm. or, I'm going to say no. Well, like, like a bunch I've, of other YouTubers and too. streamers. Oh, you've played it on your own? Yeah, I've played it a bit, and I like, like even right before this, uh, even right before we did this, because I was waiting for us to start the podcast, I just casually played through four floors, and like I never was in danger, and I was just, just buzzing so, on through it. <laughs> why like, was everything falling apart? When Bird and I joined you guys, were we that I bad? Think, n no, <laughs> I think the game couldn't handle it. Well, I know that yeah. it was like, really laggy on Legitimately, I went back and looked at the I footage. Think... And what would happen is, you guys would do something. 
and I'd be like miles away and I'd get hit by it. When Keith and I were doing it, there was a little bit of that, but it wasn't nearly as egregious. Like it was a small, small amount. Of... So I would slash my sword, except I, you would walk well, into the slash one, after I'd already left that. At spot. one point, yeah. Mm-hmm. At one point, I mean? Bird did like a jump attack uh, when I was editing the footage. Bird does this jump attack. I'm nowhere near it, and I go flying like ten feet away, and I'm like, "Yeah, what? Yeah, we ran into that quite a bit. I I found it to be a very, but like that never happened experience. when it was Keith and myself." <laughs> And, and I, I will say, kind of even forged. while we were playing with the co-op, where everything was supposed to be going wrong, I was still breezing through at that time, too. Like, mm-hmm. I never died yeah. or came close to dying that entire run, also, when we were playing together and everyone was having trouble. Like, the thing is, it... I don't, I don't... I can't explain the people having trouble with the game. I don't know. I haven't watched anyone have trouble with the game yet to see what's going on. But I wonder if those same people ever played Dark Souls at all or something? I don't know, because... The thing about this have. game is it takes the exact controls of Dark Souls, but has none of the tricky level design and none of the, like, surprising and dangerous enemies. So, just being kind of cautious in a Dark Souls-y sort of way, with the exact controls of Dark Souls and playstyle of Dark Souls, you're just like, oh, that's easy. You're just, you're just cautiously, like, managing enemies. Every, every single time I fight anyone in that game, I get all the enemies in front of me, make sure they're on one on one side of me. I sort of mm. slowly back up, and as they trigger their attack animations, I dodge backwards, and I attack, and I dodge backwards, and I just keep going till everyone falls, and everyone's just a, uh, like a dotted line of corpses through that hallway that I led them through backwards, and I just do, I, I can do that. The, I can do that for the whole game. I think the issue with the four player though was that you would have allies flanking you and dealing with other enemies. And either they would move, or the enemies would move, and then suddenly you'd have enemies at your rear. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas, when you're playing like solo, like you were saying, or as a duo, it was much can, easier to kite. You can kite them a lot and, easier. Yeah. Yeah, you could kite them properly and make sure that they won't, you know, surprise you from behind. But when everyone was sprawled about the room, facing different groups, and, like, maybe one person would go down... Maybe uh, mm-hmm. they were strafing around, but then everyone would start converging on. I, I know I got converged on a number of times, and I'm like, wait, where did that person come from? And it was just. Uh... Yeah, yeah. I will say to some extent, though, you were also just kind of overwhelmed because you were trying to, like, pause the game and look at, like, recipes and yeah. stuff like that to, like, uh, craft yeah. things, and then you'd get ambushed by stuff. And, like, there was, there was definitely other things going wrong to uh, exasperate the problem for you mm-hmm. to an extent. I will say well, one that thing was with multiplayer. He kept that's... saying, you know, craft potions, craft yeah. potions, and yeah. I'm like, okay, I will, and then something pops up that wasn't there before. Yeah, well, Shell mm. had never, you'd never ever played a Dark Souls E game before. Yeah, no, yeah, no, she has different definitions had. of safe. That's, than what the game that's had. an element of uh, self awareness. <laughs> that, that's that's that's, mm. a, that's an element of uh, environmental awareness and caution. That environmental just takes awareness, basically, not self. Well, I'm also <laughs> used to like when you're crafting or something, everything is paused. Not things can still attack you. But I understand for right. like multiplayer's sake, you can't because then people would be freezing time on each other. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the game the game intentionally doesn't want you pausing the game because like crafting mm-hmm. and everything is a thing you have to do in a safe place, and you have to figure out how to be safe mm-hmm. basically. And part of that is the right. fact that you can like rotate the camera around and keep an eye on your surroundings and figure out if you're safe mm-hmm. to do something like that. But uh, the problem with the game, which you guys didn't fully experience because we only stopped after an hour in four-player multiplayer, is that me and Wanda played the whole thing, and I also played four floors earlier and stuff like that, and I've touched it a little bit since then uh, here and there, and mm-hmm. it's just it's the same thing all the time. Like, it's the game so has, like, not ten fun, floors. isn't it? Like, it's once just you guys play like charging three minutes melee of it, you're weapons. like, I get it. Yeah. yeah. There's no variety. There's no, like, surprises in the game. It's just it's guys just with like, swords you running at you, you kind of slowly. Yeah. And, and it slightly gets more varied because sometimes, oh, these aren't guys with swords. The en- They're spiders the slowly chasing you to melee you. Yeah. It's like, oh, cool. The environments feel, like, completely flat. Like, there's nothing that really happens. Like, it's just like, I walk through a hallway. This hallway like, is literally inside of a cube. My best counterpoint for how this game falls flat in comparison to the game that it actively compares itself to, which is Dark Souls. Like, the game, it's, the developers themselves promote this game as being like Dark Souls on purpose. And, uh, yeah, well, they also right. partnered well, with, they're like, trying Namco to, Bandai. They're, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. But, like, the thing about, like, one of my first examples I'd go to of how this game is not like that 
and why it doesn't work to just mm-hmm. borrow the control scheme and animation style but not do any of the other stuff and why it doesn't work uh in Bloodborne, in one of the first areas, you're on. There's this. There's, if if you're if you played the game, you th- uh, think of the place right before the cleric demon, for an example. There's an area you go up some uh-huh. stairs, and there's a flaming tree in the middle of a room. And behind that tree, mm-hmm. you see that there is four. There's three humanoids and like three dogs, kind of patrolling in a circle. If you alert them, mm-hmm. one guy pulls out a gun. Two guys charge you with pitchforks, and three dogs run at you. The dogs are the fastest. And they can close the gap the fastest, and they can lunge at you, and they can be a real pest to handle, and because of their lunging attacks and their speed, they quickly can surround you if you're not actively moving. So they have a whole strategy for how you move around them. The melee guys are more straightforward, but they're just additional enemies coming from a certain direction, and you have to deal with that and keep them Mm -hmm. in mind with each other. And then, of course, the added gun guy, he just stands still and shoots a straight line shot at you, but you have to be ready to dodge that or to break line of sight while you're fighting the other enemies. And you're making all these considerations at once, and that's why the game's difficult, is because of the awareness you have to have to deal with all those things. In Necropolis, Necropolis. If, a, if, you don't if, an enemy, if an enemy mob has three different unitypes, they all just all run melee. shoulder to shoulder at you at the same speed and all melee you at the same speed. And sometimes one guy's mm-hmm. in Pyramid Head that has a spinny lightning attack, but he's just... It's the same thing. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. he looks a little different in his animation, but u- ultimately you kind of just fight him the same way, and it's like, who gives and a that, shit? <laughs> that goes a long way for why a lot of people feel like the game isn't finished. Yeah. I don't feel like the game's finished. Because it doesn't there's accomplish not, things. There's no, yeah, there's nothing to learn about the game. Like, there's that, no feeling of, like, I've learned a new thing, there's a new challenge in front of me. It's yeah. just like, I'm going to do the same thing for six hours, and then I get a skin. I would Necropolis. also like it if their the floors were themed, or something. Just they are. Themed. They kind of are. Yeah. We didn't get into that very much with you guys because we didn't get very far. But different right. floors have different uh, environments. Like we got to a swamp one at the very end there, and different yeah. environments will the have. The themes different were enemies. actually kind of cool, but they came a but little all, too late the because same. the very the default theme looks like ass. And like even then, when you change the theme, it's like, oh, it's a big shark monster. He runs at you slowly and tries to hit you. Yeah. <laughs> like. It's like gauntlet yeah. enemies to some extent. It's like, oh, look, a mob of stuff. Is it ghosts or is it goblins? Who cares? Because <laughs> it's like... Because it's all just... they're going to do is just walk towards you. Yeah. Yeah. Gauntlet's shit, as far as I'm concerned. So Necropolis ends up being the latest here, entry in a type of indie game that's been happening for a while now that I try to explain to Wander sometimes, too. Of the, this concept of, like... It's the type of game where I'm like, Gold Star, you made game. It is technically game. That's the accomplishment. Like, you mm-hmm. don't... Like, stuff doesn't feel designed, and counters aren't accomplishing things. Stuff doesn't it just feels like an feel alpha. like it's... Stuff doesn't feel crafted around to make a certain experience happen, and a certain thing happen. You're not, right. You don't feel like you're exploring to find I, the thing that was placed for you, and that's partly because of the procedural generation, but also... It's just a bland, flat surface for ten floors of just one also, thing happening. why was the Necropolis mm-hmm. built in the first place? Oh, well, they no don't... <laughs> yeah, they're not gonna give you... They're not gonna give you lore. Don't even ask. I mean, they they occasionally had lore about God this, something that... Yeah, it was cool. But... It seemed like if they wanted to have a story in there, it could have actually been kind of interesting. Because I wondered what we were fighting for. What was at the bottom? We were fighting for uh, ourselves. We were, we were <laughs> fighting for, for Dick Nugget Oops. McTriangle Face's uh, uh, amusement. The Eye of Horus. I would say that even, like, even though they're planning updates to the game, I don't think that game ever wants to have an explicit story. I think mm. it's just an atmosphere no. and a and a villain, basically. But uh one thing I is that they are like they are take they are acknowledging the big influx yeah. of negative reviews is the is the recent they actually, news. Yeah, there's that a, one there's point a press two release. thing they put up. Yeah, yeah, I read that and I was like, this kind of feels like they're responding specifically to my Steam review, which is probably <laughs> fine because everybody has the same thing. But just the organization of it was like this is weirdly familiar. Yeah. Mm. I mean, they probably like, were addressing it, honestly. Like, there's no oh, way they could miss your review. It's, like, the biggest one on Steam. It's weirdly easy to miss, because I can never find it anymore, because I can't find yeah, it. Yeah, it's... Steam yeah. only shows, the, like, brand new reviews for some reason now, which seems like the worst right. idea. Ooh, that was a good chest. That's a weird I concept. I mean, it makes sense, but it's also a pain in the ass to work with. But, like, to, to point out something that we didn't really cover yet in this, one of the things about Necropolis is that it's kind of a loot-based game, because... Uh, all you can do to level up your There's character kind themselves, of really, <laughs> is that if you pick up a bunch of money at the end of every floor, you can go to a shrine to make your health bar longer. That's the only leveling yes. system. Aside from that, you just need loot. You need equipment. And 
Unfortunately, all of the, the all the melee weapons and armor are only categorized into four tiers. Uh, well, tier zero, one, two, three, four, and that's the only information you're really given. And the best you can mm -hmm. do is you could maybe pick up the different weapons and like swing it at your enemies and try to count how many hits mm -hmm. it takes to kill them, and then weigh that against how fast it seems to be going is like the best you can do. Because if you look at the description for any item, all it does is tell you a snarky joke. It says, this is a tier two sword. Mm -hmm. Snarky joke about the sword. And that's all the information you get. It doesn't tell you damage or attack speed. And or, a lot of people hated that. Or like how much lightning damage there is. Like it's bad they, enough for oh, weapons. Yeah. They addressed that in their press release. Yeah. They were but like, really believe this clearly made most people mad. Yeah, like it's, it's bad enough for melee weapons and stuff like that. But at least with those, you can like, oh, it's tier two. So it's better, mm -hmm. I guess, maybe. But... It gets even worse with the codexes, because the game builds up this one semi-permanent currency as you play more and more, which you can spend on these things that can be equipped to modify your character, and you can only equip mm -hmm. one at a time. But every single description for every codex, even though they require, like, sometimes multiple playthroughs worth of currency to buy in the first place, is just a weird, vague joke. And you're like, I literally can't tell what this was, mm -hmm. to the point where I, like, I actually tweeted earlier when I found the codex page in its modern state on the wiki, the the brand, the modern uh, form of the Codex wiki still has entries that say we really don't know, we still don't know what this does. <laughs> like people actively experimenting can't figure out what some of these that items that could almost do. be fun, mm. but apparently not. Well, like I just, really you... wanted to see the laser shields actually fire a laser uh -huh. when you're. Defending. I know. Yeah, the, the weapons needed special properties that made them interesting. Well, and beyond I, just I think being an fundamentally thing, like you know how we had to find the red axe in order to have flaming effect. I I think it would have been much cooler what? if they had taken the crafting thing a step further. So you just get a bunch of like shit tier weapons constantly, but you're also getting a ton of upgrade materials constantly as you already do. And so if you want that flame axe, go for it. And like if you want it to be heavier, or, or... if you want a flame sword as opposed so, yeah. to just flame axe. I just want to throw an example out here real quick. Here's an actual codex in, uh, in, the, in the game that you can equip. And it costs five of the special currency coins. It's called Combat Got You Down? Regener Size. The description is centering oneself without looking like a total dip is kind of difficult. And for God's sake, don't get your nose pierced. Jesus. That's that awful. Is the item description. That's so bad. How can. Oh, what it's were result they is that, thinking? The result, according to the wiki, that people, as far as people have been able to figure out, is that it doubles your stamina regeneration, which is actually really useful, which would be cool if it said that. Because people <laughs> want that. You, uh -huh. buy that. you would buy that halfway through your first playthrough if you knew it did that. But it yeah. says nose piercing, so what? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, this is... Because getting your nose pierced takes the stamina out of you. That's, like, the jokes are funny for, like, the first two hours of the game, but at some point you you're just breathe into your nose. aggravated by them. Like, I mean, they just start breathing breathing I really appreciated the... I really yeah. appreciated the weird, dumb writing uh, in those, like, wall writings. Like, those were cool. Yeah, those were funny. But not I'm the still down. I'm still done, uh, down with that, that, like, quirky writing style right there. Because, alright, mm -hmm. it means nothing. Here's the thing, and though. I you take that silly that. text... And you put it in italics under the real make it description. Make a flavor text. Yeah. 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 Like, like a, a magic text. card. Uh-huh. Or every legendary item in a Dragon Age game, which has all the real stats, and then italics tells you the history of this magical axe and whatnot. Like, you can do both. It's cool. Yeah. It's fine. Flavor text is still the, the appropriate thing room. to do. It. Don't make it the description, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. But, uh, I yeah, mean, should... my big feeling for it was just, like... Ah, it was so boring. Like, I've never <laughs> played a game that I wanted to have fun with that, like, after about 45 minutes, it was like, I I had to make an acceptance in myself. Just like, I'm not going to have fun playing this. I haven't mm -hmm. yet. I'm not going to continue to have fun. And then I lost all my items. I lost all my fucking yeah. items when I died. Yeah. So it was like, I'm not going to have fun in the future now, clearly. Yeah. That happened to me way too many uh. times, and I really wish, instead of giving back up with, with no stuff, I wish I would either be forced to wait just until respond. the next floor to respawn, Something. or yeah. uh, I just stay dead until my party member comes to fix me up, and if they can't do it, we're fucked and the it runs over. Well, is that the yeah, issue Yeah, that would be that great is, if, like, the party I died. Mean, yeah. What were you going to say? I can, understand, I can understand why desk may penalize you, because, I mean, obviously you... you because the single player version is permadeath enough. and you're just dead if you yeah. lose. Right, right. So, but the problem is, it just makes you weaker. 
So how are you? Well, I, I think that's kind of the point. It's it's punishing you for being a bad yeah. player, and so you die and whatever. It's and sort like, of like I losing kind of stamina that. or life, and yeah, yeah. Like I get it. It's like it, it's there is your very de definitive penalty for dying in co-op. Mm -hmm. However, it more or less m means anybody that's shit at the game. We'll gets penalized, shit. and <laughs> anybody that's not shit, looking at Keith mainly, <laughs> um, is fine. And so, like, it's Keith like the Dark Souls around... 2 thing. Uh, I guess, you yeah, like, actually. On death, you lose a life bar. Uh, Kinda, yeah. I, but this yeah, is but... way more punishing. Because in Dark Souls <laughs> 2, you didn't, like, lose your fucking inventory and lose upgrades on your items and stuff like that. So, were you so... guys just nude when you woke up? Like, you just had no stuff in your inventory? Period. Uh, yeah, we had you the, go back to it entirely to a clean slate. Wow. Well, remember the starting equipment? Just you'd have that. Exactly. You wouldn't even have your blessings or codexes, so you'd either have to yep. save up for it again. Require them. No, you don't have to save it up for it again. <laughs> what? Uh, so no, the, no, sorry, no, no, well, no. Codexes, you wouldn't have to. I mean, the codexes yeah, the codexes are just there. You wouldn't. But, like, if you want to get another blessing, which, by the way, you probably do, uh -huh. that's going to... That's going to be a while. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm browsing the wiki, and... I, I was trying to look. For, I was trying to look for multiplayer information just to find out if they had specific listings of the penalties for dying and stuff like that. I did find one page, uh, necropolis.gamepedia.com/slash/game-tips, and the entire page is multiplayer seems easier than solo play. That's, that's all that's, it says. That's our full list. Thank of you. Game, that's the community's full list of uh, aggregate tips for this game. <laughs> to be well, fair, I, I get the feeling most people aren't going to give, give a shit or up. bother. <laughs> like there, there are games that can kind of like come back from this sort of thing pretty easily. Like I'm playing Starbound. Literally, I don't right think the this second. game's coming back. Oh yeah, and, and Starbound had Starbound bad press for like three years. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it did. <laughs> but, like it also it also had a very committed community and like the developers stuck with it. Yeah. If if they d decide to go the Starbound route and say fuck you guys, we're gonna make this game good. Y y I'm down for that, and I could yeah. see it getting good because like they did that with um. Right, but yeah, it's giving you more of a story in this, right? Like, what are the differences? Oh, the I I don't even want to tell. A lot more bosses. We can, I mean. Uh, we we can talk about why Starbound is good after I've played a little bit more. I with think people liked the. I think yeah. people really liked the role playing podcast. aspect of Starbound, though. Like people are but, really dedicated to like the race that they chose. I and don't everything. think so, but what? um, no, maybe fan art everywhere. I don't. Everywhere. I guess. Um, but like ultimately, I mean, there's always I, crazies. I, I do think mm -hmm. Hairbrain Schemes is capable of turning it around, considering they did exactly that with um. Oh, Shadow shit, was, Run? Uh, Shadow Run, yeah. You know, Shadow Run Returns was... It was okay, I liked it. But Dragonfall's um, so supposed guess, to be amazing. But yeah, Dragonfall's supposed to be amazing, and Hong Kong was pretty good too. From what I heard from you and other people. They're not as good. I had a good time, and, I never played any other ones though, so I can't compare them to the previous two. Well, mm -hmm. oh, wait, I've seen a little bit of Shadow Run, and I know that there's been RPG books... For the so Shadowrun, like, so there's a difference. Uh, they made a video game based on the Shadowrun setting. Uh, how, however, um, they're not actually owned by Isn't the same. It old as shit. It's as old as as D and D, if yeah. not older. No, oh, yeah. I, mean, I, I don't mean Shadowrun. I mean the video game. Oh no, 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 no. 2013, 2014, there were some 2015, NES Shadowruns. games. Yeah, that's yeah, what I was so thinking of. <laughs> I was like, those oh. are old games. Oh no, the Hairbrain Studios Shadowrun games have been for the last three years. One one game yeah, a year. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't there a multiplayer game that you wanted us to play that was like a cyberpunk oh, yeah, that's, squad that's, thing? Oh, you're thinking Satellite Rain, which is yeah. actually what a lot of people said uh, they wanted out of uh, Shadowrun but didn't Precisely. get. Precisely. I actually really want to play like, Satellite Rain, but time. Shadowrun, <laughs> I mean, isn't isn't Shadowrun the whole, like, elves and dwarves and orcs and stuff instead. in cyber... <laughs> oh, shut up, bird. Yep. You know you love it. Cyberpunk universe I do like kind of deal? I will become I a lumber god. <laughs> <laughs> we should actually probably wrap this up, because we've passed yeah, the oh, yeah, we should. Mark. So, Did we talk yeah. about No Man's Sky at all? No, we'll just deal uh, with it later. We can save next time. No, I, let's, let's save it uh, two, what, two, three weeks from now? Yeah, I was gonna say, it can we come talk about when it's out? Do you all, uh, do yeah. you all wanna yeah. play it? I'll, I'll buy it. I'll play I'm it. I'm honestly yeah, just tired of talking about a game. It. 
like every time we bring it up, we're just going to talk about how we don't know that much about it. <laughs> yeah, we it's, can all play Spore and then, uh, No Man's Sky and then talk about it. The funny, <laughs> the funny thing is, we had a previous episode Spore? where we discussed it and how like there's don't not much information it. out. Naturally, like immediately, like the subreddit users that obsess over the game were just flocking to our video about it and freaking out about all the information we don't know. But I will say, even now, you look up like an IGN video released like two days ago, and immediately there the uh, commentary from the guy from IGN is me like, so yeah, the, the number one question on everyone's minds is, what exactly do you do in No Man's Sky? And that's a brand new video, like because that's still the you question. You do everything nor- and nothing. That's the question. And that's still the, the question things. that normal people have. Is uh, unless you're obsessing over every detail for the last two years, I'm still totally right. Like and you no still one have really an knows. Answer. People largely still don't yeah. really know what, what to expect from the game. You want to That's know what it is? I'm gonna I'm gonna call it right now. Nothing. You do nothing. <laughs> we'll see if I'm right. I thought it was just sightseeing. You sightsee, maybe. <laughs> it's it's like, it's space exploring, crafting, I, I am generation. Maybe, it's it's. I'm 100 percent down with like, space. I could see, exploration for like. We just like, won't have a super cohesive exp- uh, understanding of what it feels like and how it plays and everything like that until it's fully out. Until then, it's a see, it's like, a concept. Scanning a uh, various alien wildlife so that you can make some kind of zoological. I mean, Record or, you know. let's oh, not if even you do speculate. that, then everyone's just gonna make dicks. Yes, also that. Um, Wait, no, dicks that no I, one will I, ever see because you'll never encounter you uh, even planets other people see. You weren't yeah. creating the animals on your planet. Oh, I thought right? you said you wanted yeah. them. You wanted to like scan them to like create like a super Bird's, being. No, no, no. Bird's no, no, brain just, is still keyed to spore. This is just <laughs> discovering the planets and seeing what wildlife is on them. That's a bit of the sub narrative about this game is but people are there gonna be crossing like their fingers evading... saying, "Don't be spore, don't be spore, don't be spore." <laughs> it's going to be spore. Yeah. I can it's going to be spore. And other things. <laughs> it's going to be prettier than spore, and that's going to help a lot. Hmm. <laughs> well, that spore mean literally be three deeper. different games that had like nothing to do yes. with each other. Uh, it was, was uh, four, separate four, stages, wasn't it? And they were yeah, awful. It was, the first it was, one was it great. Was... All the other ones sucked terribly. The first one was feeding frenzy, wasn't it? Yeah, it and it was like awesome, because Feeding Frenzy is super was... fucking fun. Yeah, it was Feeding Frenzy at slash Katamari. Like, small thing yeah. gets bigger by getting slightly... It's it's what, like, what's the new... What's it was, that? uh, Itch.io. Yeah, or, Itch.io. Uh, yeah. What was it, Slither.io? It's, it's, no, no, that's the that's like the snake one. Snake.io? Like Isn't there Snake.io now? now? Yeah, yeah, there's a ton it's, of .io yeah, games. Yeah, it's like that's, that's a comical amount now. of them. <laughs> I, I, I like, I like the, the snake uh, one. The snake one's really fun. But yeah, like the, what it was, it was a you it's like the mitochondria thing, like or like little 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 microorganisms eating each other, Micro then like cellular. tribal groups running around fighting yeah, stuff well, and eating, no, 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 no. and then microorganisms, and, and then just jump no, it was them. microorganisms, creatures where you're either killing the shit out of everything, which was really poorly done, or you're or you're, you're like running. dancing with them. <laughs> Fire. No, 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 no. Well, there was, like, a dancing thing, too. You if you were an herbivore. herbivore or a carnivore. Yeah, it was bizarre okay. and stupid. And then you went into tribal mode, which kind of played, like, early uh, Age of Empires. And then it went into civilization mode, which was kind of like a shitty SimCity, uh, Civ, whatever it, one. And then there was space, which was boring and but awful. My, my, my understanding is specifically... there, like there, I, From what I've heard, there was, like, no transition... Really, from the cell part no, to no. the world part, and from the world part I'm to the space part, too much. you carried over some yeah. points. That was it. Like, yeah, like the actual the, world part was probably more cohesive a little bit, but the the parts, the beginning and end of the game were like what? There was no, <laughs> like there was games. no transitionary gameplay. It was just suddenly new game, and it was so poorly stitched together. It felt jarring and unfun, and it was quite possibly the worst birth, worst birthday I've ever had. Oh. What happened on your birthday? <laughs> it came out on my yep. birthday. Oh. That's right, wow. you told me about that, and it was a fucking disaster for you. It was awful. Yeah, I was also Yay. I also had the flu, so it's just like, this yeah. sucks, yeah, you and I don't have good well. birthdays, so it's just like... Uh, you had the flu that day, uh, and Spore was worse. <laughs> oh. I, you know what? I would, <laughs> actually say, I would actually say the disappointment from Spore was worse than having the flu. The flu was actually pretty okay, because I just mm, sat in bed a- and it was... Fucking <laughs> wrecked! Damn that savage AF! Oh man! Ooh. All right, 
Well, this has been our first episode of our new podcast. Uh, you can find our channels at... Uh, I'm Keith. You can find me at youtube.com slash SebastianSB. Uh, Wanderbot, say hi. Ah, hi. That's Wanderbot. You can find him at youtube.com slash Wanderbots with an S at the end. Yes. And Birdcatcher. Uh, user and slash no, user, user slash Wanderbots. Wanderbots. If you yeah, do yeah. One, you I get didn't weird realize Russian that dude. until I had oh, a thousand weird. subs. And I had yep. been sending out constant press. Co- I had been linking, press. yeah, I had been linking him on my videos. It's like go check out Wanderbot at oh, no. youtubecom slash Wanderbots. And I was like, I it, uh, like a year ago, I clicked on that and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yep, wrong <laughs> channel. What did it take you to? Wrong channel. Uh, I I've got an empty I've got an empty thing that is also yeah. mine, but it's too it late says, for me but to switch over. Of his videos or subs. It's stupid. And the guy that's the voice. How's that possible? It has to do with the G Plus thing. It has to do with the yeah. Google, uh, Google, Google Plus. Google Plus stuff. ruined my URL, and I don't care that much because people can still find me pretty easily. Oh, is yeah, it nobody like uses it. a separate yeah. YouTube channel linked to an email that was like... No, no, they're both linked to the holder? exact same email. Same one. I have two... I have one's two tied to a G Plus account, and one is not. Yep. I'm, just, I'm just trying to end the podcast, guys. <laughs> All right. That's <laughs> oh, fine, it's and, fine. And the guy whose voice you could hear from across the street is, is can be found at Birdcatcher Games. Yes, uh, and links to everyone's p- your account should be in the descriptions of the videos. They'll be in mine, and hopefully and theirs if they're decent people. You the monsters. chick is shell. <laughs> she doesn't have a YouTube channel or a Twitch channel or anything. Yeah. Well, that's, that's because we were the Wander she, Bots initially, yeah. and then we Wander's just became Wander one. Bot. Yes. Yes. Well, <laughs> thank you all for Dragon. watching. For nerds Adorable. save the universe. Yep. See you guys uh, next time. Leave comments. We'll read them, and uh, <laughs> take care.